to the first ever Florida Fishy Finger Micro Skiff Podcast. And I appreciate you joining me. I have several other YouTube channels that I'm streaming on as well, if you're interested. They're on the channel homepage. So, one of the things I'm going to be doing a lot more of is looking into micro skiffs and they're incredibly useful boats and I thought in this live stream I would show you mine and if you have any questions you could just ask one of the things I'm always considering is is now the time to upgrade to the next best boat. So in this video, we'll kind of explore that idea too. If you're like me, then you don't have a lot of space to like, uh, you know, put the heavy duty boat into. But you must have a boat. There's no other reality that even makes sense. And so that was my initial criteria. And I love to do some things on boats. Uh, I like to fish. Hey, get out of the house and fish. That's cool. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I love this skiff. I see you uh, jumping on the live stream. And this is cool. This is the first ever Florida Fishy Finger micro skiff podcast and by the way uh, i'm also in the process of setting up some interviews and interactions with various boat man micro skip boat manufacturers i thought that would be fun of course i know the the cool people at ancona um through buying this thing and that's been 100 percent positive experience but uh there's a lot of other great manufacturers as well around the state and i've contacted a few of them to see if they'd be interested and there are a bunch that are interested so I'll, what i'm trying to do now is set up the capability for a, like a skype video interview with them ask them questions about the design you know etc have a live stream where people can ask questions as well for some of the major ones yeah solo skiff for sure i saw that comment absolutely uh, another one is East Cape Skiff. I don't know if you've seen theirs, but not Solo. Oh, not the Solo. Uh, the Mako. Yeah, yeah, the Mako for sure. I haven't actually looked at the Mako smaller boat. And when I say small, I mean, you know, something like this thing, which is, you know, you're looking at, like, there's the, you know, that's the uh, the depth of the hull. So it's like basically from my elbow to the tip of my fingers, the hulls, this hull weighs about th under 350 pounds, all composite materials. Um, it's actually got a honeycombed deck in it, which is kind of interesting. They fill it in with foam. So it's the, you know, the unsinkable thing. Yeah, this kind of micro skiff thing is really catching on and for good reason. You know, like I said, you don't have much of a space to put it in. Well, it's in. And you know, I'm I'm not trying to brag because I didn't make the thing, I just bought it. But um, <laughs> I love it, but I'm just saying, uh, when you go to a launch ramp with this thing, not that anybody cares, but you notice something that happens, which is people come up one after another, usually one or two people will come up and say like, you know, dude, that thing is sweet. And I'm thinking that uh, it's super cool, the, the appreciation of it, but also and to meet someone in that positive way. But the and they're right. <laughs> it is sweet. You know, it's a freak show. And sometimes we're, we were getting ready to take it out in the ocean or something like that to go, you know, 10 miles out and, and fish in it like that. So we're doing like, you know, borderline stupid things, but within reason responsible uh, countermeasures taken uh one of which is this responsible countermeasure 
And that is the good old EPIRB. Doesn't hurt to have an EPIRB. I'll tell you, you don't want to spend the uh, 300 bucks or whatever. I have a link down in the description, by the way, if anybody's looking to buy any stuff like this. Um, yeah, you don't want to buy the EPIRB until you need the EPIRB, the distress beacon, and then you would give anything for it. But, uh, yeah, so this little thing was, when I got it, let's say it was like under 15K, you know, for everything, and I, I got everything I wanted on it, and it's been a complete, beautiful experience having it. Uh, it's just so easy to, to fish with. I could have this thing hooked up to my truck, which I'm going to do another review, actually, of my truck, too, which has been great. I love that thing. Um, I got everything that they recommended in, at Ancona, basically. I just asked them, what's the right thing? And then occasionally I'd say, like, oh, I think I want to do this thing. And they said, like, you don't want to do that thing. I said, oh, okay, I don't want to do that thing. And then I was so glad after that I didn't do that thing. Like getting a larger horsepower engine. This thing uh, sips gas and moves it just fine and is nice and light. The Tahatsu 20 EFI, the fuel injected version. Now, the other thing was I wanted simplicity, so I didn't go with the steering wheel in the front. Uh, for a reason. First of all, this is like riding a motorized surfboard, certainly. When you're fitting this thing, you, you, you're you going 28 miles an hour. You feel like you're in a rocket ship. I guarantee it. And uh, But you're just holding on to that bar. Hold on to the back here. I have an extension. Actually, I could show you if you're interested. A tiller extension. There she is. The old tiller extension. Yeah. It's like a carbon fiber you know, thing. It's got something like skateboard deck, you know, kind of track here that you hold on to. Again, super lightweight. You just tighten that. And then, you know, that... Oh, earthquake. Yeah. So you just, you know, kind of jam that on and then tighten these knobs. And then you have an extension which reaches all the way up. See how that works? And you can you can counterweight as you come around on turns. You like how I did it? With you? you can counterweight on turns and bank into turns. Although it does feel like on a very high speed that this thing wants to slip. It never has happened once, though. But I always just, you know, some boats when I ride on them, I'm like... Do not want to skip it. You don't want to skip the skiff. So what happens in boat situations where that occurs is typically the boat will lose its thing, lose its grip in the water, skip, dig, and then you go flying. So the, the old skip and dig. I want to avoid that. But anyway, so, but I've never had you know a moment in this boat that was unsafe that I didn't actively produce myself. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate you signing in there. Good, good to get back to work. Good to be working. And when you're not working, you can go fishing. All right. I'll walk you through a couple more areas of this boat. Um, the Garmin little mini. Uh, I got it. I picked it up at Bass Pro Shop. By the way, I click my affiliate links if you want to check it out for uh, Bass Pro Shop. But this thing is insane for like i ended up getting it for under 100 bucks with a coupon and it'll go down to uh 1500 feet it's been so useful fishing offshore fishing inshore it keeps gps coordinates it shows the temperature of the water it will track all your previous routes i mean on i just i couldn't believe how much for that price it comes in the skiff comes with some basic wiring that they installed they can do more they could do anything i'm sure but the point is any skiff manufacturer could do whatever most of them but uh yeah so you have basically i went a little extra mile oh yeah we turned off that that's the other cool thing is you have the i always want this in a boat where you have the 
the master power switch. Just turn it to on. You can hear the bilge. And then the navigation lights built right into the side of the console. You can hear the bait live bait well pump, but then this is the sweetness. This is what you must have. It's just some simple LED under gunnel lights. <laughs> and I got them guide green. <laughs> well, they're just green, but to me they're guide green because I also had the this is a cool thing about dealing with like the mom and pop skiff manufacturers and so on is that you can they'll do things like this like they did it guide green on the center console guide green on the hull and then this kind of off-white standard thing that they do on the top which which i love <laughs> quite simply put this serves as a good dry area and i mean we have completely gone out to the raging sea with this thing and Provides a nice little spot, you know, all the necessaries are in there. The old uh, heavy duty pliers. Uh, we also had this you know, plumbed and we got a super decent sized bait well in there. I mean, we were able to get close to two dozen small greenies in there you know depending something like that keep them alive if you can keep the pump on the one thing is the way it's uh rigged now once you start going it it stops flowing <laughs> so what we do is we've come up with a countermeasure is we put in bubblers like we got two of those bass pro shop little ten dollar bubblers and we just put in two bubblers to keep the bait kind of fresh and then we'll stop every five miles or so whatever and turn the the bait well back on and flush it out and kind of get them fresh again. I bought this. I wasn't sure if I was going to go with, uh, you know, whether I should go with the angle or the Yeti or whatever, but angle and Yeti are the same and there's all kinds of stories, but I don't know. Point is, I bought this and it's green, but it's also heavy and it serves as a bow casting platform, which is a cool thing about getting cooler and getting one that's a little heavier. And you can also, you know, open bottles. Just saying. Now, the cool thing about, you know, polling skiff in general, but it's, you know, it's a true fishing boat, meaning it is made for fishing. There is nothing between this boat, you, and a fly rod having the most insane fly fishing experience of your life. It's, uh, there is nothing for the fly line to even remotely get caught on. It's a big, wide area. There's nothing sticking up above. So, yeah, we've caught giant barracuda out in the open ocean with this on fly, all kinds of cool things, tarpon, gator trout. So, you know, if you're two-man fishing a boat like this, your probability of scoring fish in Florida is so incredibly greatly increased. Really is. Just one person up on the platform polling and looking, one person up on the front targeting. And if you have live bait in there, for sure. Now, one of the things I'm going to start doing uh, as I live stream more on this channel is to live stream while fishing or while in remote areas where I have cell phone coverage. So that'll be kind of cool. Try to get some live action on the live stream, so to speak. That will be an achievement. That's an achievement in my 2021 bucket list is to show catching a good trophy style fish that would be you know redfish snook trout level or higher on a live stream so we'll see if i can achieve that yeah so in addition to having that big casting platform you can see a cool thing about this plenty of space in there i've got an aluminum or a gas tank, you know, plumbed up in there. Which holds eight gallons of gas, which is more than you could possibly burn in a day. But they've got, you know, they've got the fixtures on there that don't have anything get caught on them either. Which is very nice. 
But having that big casting area also gives you a decent storage area. I ended up plumbing, having them plumb the gas tank in the front because that's what they recommended for the waiting, and it was perfect. The other thing about micro skiff, oh, by the way, I added one polling, I mean, one uh, trolling hole, rod holder, and uh, I had two that they had soldered in on the polling platform. The tunnel hull. My, my hand is blocking it. There it is. That will make a micro skiff run so shallow, you will not believe it. This thing, by the way, jumps out of the hole like no boat I've ever owned. I mean, you're out of the water in seconds, no time at all. It's a great option. And this is an Ancona Shadowcast 16 boat and review, but I don't think they sell the 16 anymore. Uh, looks like just the 18 now. You can check their website if you're curious. Beautiful boats, all the ones on that website for sure. And I also have, by the way, reviews of some all of the Salt Marsh and all of the Anc Ancona boats. Just I walk through what I like about them on the channel. So if you're not a subscriber already, please go ahead and subscribe to Florida Fishy Finger, and uh, I'm going to be doing more of these. It also talks with boat manufacturers, also fishing videos will be upcoming, maybe even an ocean micro skiff fishing mission. So subscribe, leave a comment, hit the thumbs up, like button. If you like this kind of stuff, turn on notifications, that way you'll be notified as live streams happen. If you want to support the channel, click on any of the links in the description, then anything you would purchase there supports us without costing you anything extra. So it's kind of a win-win. Okay, thanks for watching Florida Fishy Finger. Have a great day. Get out there and get a fish. It is Saturday after all.